viewers and welcome back to the self made auto channel it's been a while since we've done a brake job on the sma they're kind of all the same this one's a little crustier than most we got an 07 hondu ridgeline here uh some of you guys probably recognize this one if you could see it it's the one that we put the uh, cylinder head on there i think it was last year or so lady's still driving it but new york's still eating away at it so it needs some rear brakes more so on the other side than this side However, it is getting pretty crusty over here. So, thought I'd bring you guys along and uh, do a brake job. Now, of course, steps one, two, and three have already been performed, which include, but are not limited to, removing the wheel, jacking up the vehicle, not in that order. And whatever step three is, get some tools around. So, just using a standard 12 millimeter socket, removing both caliper bolts hopefully the pins and stuff aren't seized up take our brake caliper off kind of set that to the side oh goody goody both pins move and then we'll grab our 17 and pull the caliper bracket off now these are coming up so you got to kind of be careful with some of these uh, caliper bracket bolts if they don't want to move you know, don't snap it off. But if you do, it's not a big deal because you break the head off and then you just have to take the whole bracket and rotor all in one shot. I need to get some air tools. Oh, she's crusty. seized up. So now we'll get a little hammer, tap on the face of it. <laughs> you probably ought to take a screw out, you think, dog. That's classic right there. The majority of the screws are missing. I didn't even, didn't even think about it. So we'll use our impact driver as seen in another video. It works every time. Unless it doesn't. So there we go. Now we can tap on it. I'm gonna get just mean to it. There, look at that, huh? Now if it was hung up on the parking brake shoes. You gotta pop this little rubber out because you gotta put this in your new rotor anyways. And then you can uh, reach through there on the bottom here. There is the star wheel. Let me show you that. So it's this little guy right here. This is the adjuster for the parking brake. And you would have reached through the brake rotor, assuming it was here through the little hole. Of course, it would have lined up something like that with this notch here. And then keep giving her some turns with a pry driver what way are we going so this is collapsing it so this would have relieved the tension from it flicking it down therefore collapsing the shoes and allowing you to take the rotor off easier <clears throat> so one thing we're going to do while we're right here because it is new york and everything is crusty i just take a flat file we're going to work right across the face of the piston just scrape off the big gobbers on there you can use an air tool here also, but you just want to make sure that the boot, you know, do it before you push it in, otherwise the boot gets in your way. So you can do it like this, old manual style. Like I say, just get the big chunks off there. Makes that rotor fit, or er, uh, piston face nice and smooth and also hit up the ears of the caliper bracket too. Get the big crusties off there. This one's really not too bad, believe it or not. Sweet. So 
once you have that cleaned. Great job, great clean. We'll hit up our shoes. Get all the brake dust off there. Now prior to doing this, it's probably a good idea to make sure your parking brake works, which in this vehicle it does. Brake clean on a brake job. Let me first rest in there. Then we'll clean off the rusty dust. Just scraped off there. You can wet wash your brakes too, like if you're just using a garden hose. If you're doing it outside or something, that works fine too. But we love our brake clean. And then we will push our piston back in. Give her a light little squeeze. It's up to you whether you open the bleeder or not. In this great state, we don't touch bleeders unless we absolutely have to. Otherwise, you're buying a caliper. Like to shoot a little I'm just using some crown or fluid film uh, whichever you have I usually shoot the star wheel there keep that from getting rusty um, this style here uses a cable that pulls straight in that pulls on the parking brake arm they don't have a tendency to seize, seize. Uh, some of them that use the parking brake mechanism that kind of wise out I don't even really know how to explain it where the cable comes up into a like a pitman or a bell crank, I think they call it. Usually I'll lube those two to keep them from seizing up. If they're seized up, then you have to pull the parking brake shoes off and get everything freed up because the parking brake has to work to pass inspection. <sighs> Set some stuff to the side. We have to make sure that our caliper pins are free here, which they feel wonderful. If they're not, you can heat them up, try to get them out. At that point, usually it's time to buy a new caliper, which this thing's pretty close just because of rust. We'll knock our pads out, which are seized up. Like I say, there's still, you know, still some pad left on this. The passenger side's one that's ground down. Get these out, get our hardware off. We got all new hardware. Always replace your hardware. We have videos on that also. And the biggest part here, of course, this is uh, not going to apply if you live in the sunny state of Florida or anywhere south of Pennsylvania. The caliper brackets, as you've seen in multiple other videos, they rust completely here where it holds the pad. And when the hardware is on there, the rust gets behind it, starts squeezing the hardware, therefore locking the pad up causing the issues so needless to say the rust has to be removed um, you can use a file get it all scraped out it's going to take you a while don't use a wire brush because all that's going to do is shine up the rust you've got to get it back to bare metal here i'm going to use the sandblaster just like that so whatever you do you know you have to make sure you get all the rust out like i say a lot of guys will try to wire brush it and in my experience that just kind of shines up the rust that's there so now we have to lube them. I use the Permatex um, Ceramic Extreme because we, we like everything extreme. Now I did have a few uh, viewers comment that they too use this Permatex product and they've had bad success with it because they say it gets hard on them and then everything seizes up, which I'll be honest, I've gone through a lot of this, probably, I don't know, at least a half a dozen cans or, or so. I do at least one or two brake jobs a day, if not more on average. And I can't say I've, I've had any issues with it on you know, the mounting bracket or the caliper pins themselves. I used to use a product by uh, Stay Lube, came in a bigger tub. I had that stuff get hard and crusty on me and quit using that and that's when I made the switch to this and I haven't really had the issue. At least that I've seen. So now we'll take, we'll mount our new pads in here. Now when you mount, after you put your hardware on, when you mount your pads in, you have to be able, they have to be able to move very easily. 
you know, you shouldn't have to grind the ears off your pads or anything like that. Of course, we use a pretty high quality brake pad. If you have to grind your pad to fit, either your bracket is, you know, rusty and crusty or your brake pads are just garbage. Uh, they should fit and move back and forth nice and easy. Uh, so the hardware that we use is stainless. A lot of people have asked me, you know, why don't you lube, you know, the ears of the pads? I just, I don't. I think it keeps uh, the crud and stuff from building up there. And usually that's not where we have the issue, uh, particularly if you use good hardware. Um, you know, like the hardware that was on it. This is stainless hardware. Uh, you can see, you know, it's not, it's not rusty. You know, if we were to wipe it off, you can see it's, you know, nice and shiny still. So I always find that the big problem is, is behind the hardware on the bracket. And that's where it squeezes. So what we'll do now, pull the, uh, pull the pins out, make sure they have enough lube on them. You don't want to over lube it. We'll just give her a little shot. What's up, Mrs. O? You need to talk to me. Well, I need to write up that engine. You need to write up the engine. You need to wait? Uh, no, he brought us all, all his own stuff. Including fluids? Yep. His own fluids, his own filter, antifreeze, oil, the whole spiel. So I'm just putting labor on the boat? Yep. 25 hours? Let's screw him. Let's do 50. <laughs> Tell him it took a long time. <laughs> now book time on it's 15. Well, you gotta charge him for the new cart you need now, right? Yeah. <laughs> it didn't ruin my cart. <laughs> Next time you pull an engine, that's Oh, that cart held lots of engines. Uh, 15 hours. Okay. To R&R engine, but they're bringing the ball joints and all that stuff for it today. Oh, you're still doing Oh, yeah, the thing's junk. So there, a little lube on the pins. Like I say, you kind of overdo that. You get too much lube ahead of the pin. As soon as this gets hot, a little pin starts to drive out, locks the brakes up. Seen it firsthand. Blew my mind. Because I'm an idiot. I forgot to clean the hub before we went sprayer with lube. So we're going to use our hub cleaning device. This is one by 3M. It's made for cleaning around wheel studs. If you only use it for cleaning around wheel studs, these things last an incredibly long time. And they work really effectively too. I like to use uh, fluid film on the hub faces because it's a little bit thicker. Now I did here. I believe Crown is working on a heavier product. It has some kind of tack in it. I guess they're reformulating it. Now that may be just rumor. But maybe when they do we'll check out that product. So let me go grab the rotor. So we'll take our new rotor, give her a little two. <laughs> good stuff. Uh, usually I'll give her a little spray down inside where the uh, brake shoes are going to run. It has all of its packing oils on there. Wipe that little guy off and then we'll line it up with the hole for the screw. And we'll find out wherever we put the screw. It should be hiding here somewhere. Boom, right where I left it. For that. Now you don't have to kill this thing. Just very gingerly tighten it up. And then we have to come back down, reach in on our star wheel. And what we'll do, flip it up. Run it up till she's snug. So the parking brake's on right now. We'll back her off a few clicks. That way we know the shoes are adjusted all the way out.
right. So that's good. We'll find our little rubber donger there. Do this before you put the caliper on because if you get all crazy and you end up pushing this rubber all the way through, you don't want to have to pull the caliper and all that stuff back off. Learn from my mistakes, folks. And then we'll get our little napkin here. Lots of brake clean in this video, gonna be lots of happy viewers. Wipe off the packing oils inside and out. You can also just clean these off in the sink with, you know, soapy water. That works just as well. Just move the dirty dishes before you do it, or your wife will get mad. And then be nice and do the dishes. Take it. We'll mount our caliper bracket. Never try to make a video on a Monday. up Whoa. Well, we'll grab some lube some purple lube or brake caliper grease we're using hit up the ears of the caliper that'll stop some squealing for you any metal to metal contact and then we'll do the piston face here. If you get a little on the boot, it doesn't matter. It's not going to ruin it. If you don't want to do the piston face, you can just do the back of the pad. We'll take. Come on, little guy. Get our top bolt started here. Slip it on down. Bottom one in. That's pretty well that She's pretty crusty. I think when I retire, I'm just going to go be a mechanic down south. Take my crescent wrench. Fix everything. Sometimes the pin turns, you need to hold that with a with a wrench. Well, brake hose is pretty stuck in this one. Come on. Get them snugged up, of course. Tighten everything to factory specs. Now your caliper, and ours is pretty close. Let's say if it was pushed in far enough, you know, the caliper is going to move on the pins, which in this case it just wants to flex the whole rotor because it's almost touching the pads. And that's pretty well it. Right where the wheel pilot's on the hub, we give her a little two. Oh, my light's in the way. Whoa! Let's pick the car up higher, huh? We'll bolt the wheel back down. Now, before you go for a ride, to avoid any butt pucker, make sure you pump the brakes first. Bleed out the caliper if you've had the bleeder open. Double check your brake fluid. Call today. And there you have it folks, that is replacing the rear brake pads and rotors and adjusting your parking brake on your Hondu Ridgeline. Very, very similar to other rear brakes. Uh, not a whole lot of uh, rocket science going on there. Leave your questions, comments, criticisms, and concerns in the comment box below. Find us on our socials, which don't include many. Find us on Patreon. And just from our viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.